We have this Ford F-150 in the shop today. Customers complaint, belt squeals. Seems pretty simple. <laughs> no, not the case at Tech Garage. It's an intermittent problem. Only squeals first thing in the morning. So what do you do? Well, we let it sit all night. We're ready to give it a try. Oh, slight squeal, but a squeal nevertheless. Help us diagnose this intermittent problem today on Tech Garage. Well, the gang's all here and we're ready to roll. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, our squealing F-150's in here and the first thing we wanna do, like we do with all of our cars, is a good visual inspection. You know, we can find 40% of the problem on cars with a good visual inspection. And you can see I have the plenum off right here. I actually have the air ducting off, eight millimeter here, down at the throttle body, just tucked it out of the way. Don't wanna disturb anything if I don't have to. Then I'm gonna take a visual inspection and look at what's going on down there. Now, we're looking at the belt, the serpentine belt drive system, and you can see down there on the harmonic balancer and over to the actual idler pulley, and it's kind of surprising to me, that looks like a new idler pulley, actually looks like a new belt, so this has probably been addressed before, and I see a little moisture down there as well. That could be a dead giveaway. It may be a water pump or something going on with the coolant system, not quite sure. But what is a serpentine belt and what does it do? Well, you guys seen it here on Tech Garage. If you haven't seen it, here's Serpentine Belt Reminder 101. It drives all of our accessories on the car. You can see down here, this is actually the harmonic balancer. Then the serpentine comes around, drives like a power steering, water pump, alternator, could drive air conditioning, but think about that for a minute. Now I know we're in Florida and air conditioning is a problem, but water pump not being driven, that's catastrophic engine damage. So you wanna make sure that you have it all in tip top shape. How are you gonna do that? Well, it's called a PAT test, P-A-T, pulley alignment tension. Now, real simple, before you take your belt off though, make sure you take a camera, take a picture of your belt or find the serpentine routing diagram in a service manual because they can get pretty intricate. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this one off. You would need a wrench to do it, but on our demo board, I'll pull the belt off. So what you're gonna do is a pulley alignment tension. We'll start out with the pulleys. Now, just look at your pulley, do a good visual inspection on the pulley and make sure that it's all in good shape so when you're working on your car, you're not gonna have an issue. Now, by looking at it, you can actually tell it right here. You can feel it, get your wire brush on some of your steel pulleys, clean them all up and make sure everything's in good shape. There's no burrs, check your bearings, make sure they're not flopping around. Alignment, that's the next thing. Well, you can go get a laser aligner like this. This is pretty cool. I actually put it on there and it shoots a beam. I know I'm in the second or third groove over here. It should match up over there. You can see the laser alignment pointing over there. That's gonna tell us if they're in or out. Now, if you're pushing a power steering pump on, a lot of times it could be out of alignment. You can visually look at that. Once again, check your bearings, make sure they're not flopping around and make sure everything's in line. That could cause a belt squeal. Pulley alignment, last is tension. Now our tension is done by our tensioner here. So you wanna make sure your tensioner's in good shape, not rattling like this one, and there's no problems with it. You can also take a belt tension gauge, you can put it on the belt, and you can measure it. And this is kind of a go, no-go kind of gauge, just shows you if your belt's good, worn, or it needs to be replaced. Once again, could cause a squeal. Now here's a tech tip for you. You can go get a spray bottle and do a water test. And what you do is you just basically spray it while it's running, be careful, make sure you spray the longest span. If the squeal's still there, well that usually means it's a tension because the water acts as a lubricant. If it goes away for a split second, you probably have an alignment problem. Now these belts today, they're EPDM material, a little bit different. The old days we used to have what's called these neoprene belts. And you can see all the cracks in there. Well, you used to just look at the cracks and you can tell it was worn out. Not the case today. EP EPDM, a little bit different. You can see they're kind of fuzzy. If you bend them, there's no problem with them. So what you gotta do is get you a little checker like this here. You can go down there, put it in there, and if I wiggle it back and forth, it's not moving much. That's a new belt. Then I get to a little age belt. It starts getting a little sloppy, and then I go down to the actual worn out belt. You can see it move back and forth. That's gonna be a problem. That's gonna introduce a lot of heat to the components, and that is gonna be a problem when it comes to the belt system. Now our belt system, Dave, we got a little water down there. Well, I got to thinking about that. 
maybe it's not the belt itself. Maybe that's just the symptom and it's not really what's causing it. So I brought a pressure checker. So let's check the coolant system and uh, let's see if that might be the issue. Man, you're always two steps ahead. Good thinking, yeah, that's wet down there. So if you're gonna use a pressure tester, just make sure yours is cold. Ours has been sitting all night so we don't have any pressure in the system. Super important. Yeah, big time, right? Nobody wants to get boiled here. And well, we can't pressure test air, so there's nothing in there, which probably indicates our coolant leak. Coolant leak. Very I got good. some water here from earlier. Let me grab some of my water. Okay. Oh, man, what a waste. That's good water. Let's put <laughs> it in here. Oh, whoa, whoa. John, we don't need a pressure tester. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, there you go. See what's coming out here. It's, mm -hmm. it's for this, this hose right here, and this is uh, it's one of those Ford hoses where they, it's more like a garden hose. It seals on the inside. Uh, instead of having a hose clamp on the outside, and those are kind of prone to leaking, and there is our problem. There you go. Sitting overnight, dripping down. Yeah. Looks like dirty work to me. I'm out of here. <laughs> of course you are. Let's, Josh, let's uh, let's handle this here. Heard y'all had a leak over here. Yeah, Somebody you're a little the... late for catching all of it here. But oh, you man, the let me here. get this under here and try to get set up. All right. What's our plan of action oh, here? Oh, man. All right. Well, first thing is... We need to drain the system, and we have two options for that. We can either use the drain on the bottom of the radiator, or since we have to take this hose off anyway, we can just let the coolant drain out right here. Usually you don't want to do that if you have electronics in the way, but we don't have any, yep. so that we're okay there. And okay. also the belt's already contaminated, so we're gonna have to replace it back. anyway. And also, we don't want to get a lot of air in the system because we'll have to bleed that later, and that's just going to wreak havoc on us. So I'm pretty sure that's an eight millimeter bolt. And I have, I have one a, here, yeah. Right, and I have a pick right here, and we'll go ahead and get started taking this thing off. We're going to get this taken off, and when we come back, John's going to explain how this whole system works, and you do not want to miss that. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Stay tuned. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping, Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool, and by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Well, we have some awesome sponsors. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, Dave did the dirty work here. He got it all off, and take a look inside of that hose, man. You can see that seal's actually broken right there. He was talking about that hose seal and how it actually works, kind of like a garden hose. Well, there it is. You can look right inside of there. There's our culprit, there's the leak. Now, how's a coolant system actually work? Well, I got it right here. You can actually look at this. Now, this would be your cylinder and inside is your piston. So that's going up and down firing. Thermodynamics, my friend, heat travels from a place from heat to less heat. So what's happening, I get that hot, that's submerged in coolant, bam, you fire. The heat jumps off into the coolant and takes a ride. Takes a ride where? We'll take a look right here. Here we go, we come out of the cylinders, we're gonna come up through a thermostat. I'll actually fire it up so you can see it. As we come up through the thermostat, we come over here to the radiator, and inside of the radiator, we're actually gonna cool it. Once again, 220, 230, coming into the radiator, outside air, 80 degrees, bam, jumping off. Hot's coming from the engine, going to the outside air, and we're getting rid of it. We're returning a little bit cooler antifreeze or coolant down here in the bottom. So that's how a coolant system works. Now to diagnose a coolant system, man, there's all kinds of tricks. What we wanna do is do a pressure test. And we can do a pressure test here in a second, but here's a tip for you. When you pop your hood, look at your overflow bottle. A lot of them are clear, not like this one. And sometimes when they're empty, you can determine there's probably a leak or maybe it's full. You may have an electrical problem. You may have a coolant fan that's not operating or something along those lines. But if it's empty, you wanna check for a leak and a pressure tester is the way to do it. We went to rockauto.com and got this pressure tester right here. We hook it up, pump it up, pump it up to the cap pressure and you're gonna pressurize the system. Then what do you wanna do? Well, you wanna look for a couple of leaks. You can have an internal leak in the engine or an external. Now your external leak, just visually take a look around like ours, you'll see it pouring out. Go and repair and fix it. Now if it's an internal leak, oh boy, now you got a problem. We're talking about head gaskets bleeding by, intake manifolds, something going on inside the engine. One other trick for you, you may wanna look inside the car on the carpet, that's right. You got a heater core inside of there, that could leak as well. So run that pressure test and you can see what's going on. Also, you wanna take care of your vehicle and that's what coolant maintenance is so important. Now take a look at this water pump right here. You can see these fins now, these vertical fins. They're all right there. And then what happens is it spins around and when it spins around, it's moving the coolant through that engine just like you've seen and it comes up through the radiator and it goes back down. Now you can see that right there. Check this one out. This one here, 
almost got us a tech garage. This one's totally missing the fins and that's a huge problem. It's actually cutting through the coolant and it wasn't pumping at all. So when you do any kind of job, make sure you replace the thermostat. That's just as important. No matter any time your engine overheats, that keeps the water in the block, keeps it up to operating temperature. So you can go into that open closed loop so you get good efficiency. Make sure you replace the thermostat. Make sure you use good coolant. Keep your coolant system in tip top shape and you won't have a failure. Well, speaking of failures, I'm not talking about Josh or Dave. They're doing a great job. Let's check in with them. All right, Johnny, we've got a hose just like the one you've got there. And uh, you can see this is the end with a traditional hose clamp. You can use that kind of clamp. You can also go to clamp tight and you get one that seals all the way around. Those are really, really good system there. And uh, over on this end, this is more like the, the garden hose type end where the seal is on the inside. And Josh, is there any secret to connecting this? Just make sure it clits because with that new seal in there, it can be pretty tight. And it's good because you want a good mating surface. So, so do we want to do this end first? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that first. Okay. Just that way we have a little bit more wiggle room getting the other side on. It'll be good to go. All right, we're going to get this thing on here and we're going to test it. But first, we're going to have a little bit of Garage Ed coming up in the next segment. So stay tuned to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. I love working here at Tech Garage with my partner, John Gardner. I also love bringing you the coolest products from the automotive world on Motorhead Garage every Sunday morning at 8.30. Yeah, buddy, I'm tuned in. I hope you do too. Set your DVRs, the coolest products, the coolest vehicles, and of course, the coolest people. It's automotive people. Motorhead Garage is a win-win. You can't beat that show. Well, we're getting our bearings here at Tech Garage. Welcome back. It's time for Garage Ed, and I want to talk about bearings. They're a critical part of the suspension system, and they need some attention. Let me give you a scenario. You know you're going down the road, and you hear that growl or that hum noise whoop, 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 as you're going. You swerve to the right or left. It may change a bit. Well, you don't know if it's a tire or a bearing. Well, I can show you how you can actually check it. You can go down the road, and let's say you're on asphalt, and you're going along, and you hear it. And then you change road surfaces. And when you change road surfaces, the noise changes. Well, that's most likely a tire. If it doesn't change, you might have a bearing issue. Now, there's a few things you can do there as well. You can go over to the tire, and I've been telling you from years, you can go at 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock. Well, new rules apply. The newer cars have a lot of caster built into the actual tires, which makes it go forward, and you're jiggling the suspension. So I want you to go at 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock and go back and forth on the newer cars and see if there's any play in that bearing. Another thing you can do, well, a stethoscope. You can go get a stethoscope, put it on, spin the bearing, and see if you hear any noise. But remember, you're taking about 5,000 pounds off that bearing, it may go away. What are you listening for? Well, listen to this. That's not good. That's an actual bearing problem, and that doesn't even have any weight on it. So you'll hear it. Now, this one here, brand new from rockauto.com, Nothing. You don't hear anything, and it's super tight. That one's loose. Now, there's a couple of different types of bearings. Now, there's the Gen 1 bearing. Now, we did that in a couple seasons past. You have to get a press. You have to put it in there. You have to make sure you use the right adapters. You're going to take the spindle out, press the whole bearing in. Big, big process. And a lot of times, you end up with something like this right here. This is not good. You actually press the inner bearing out, and you ruin an $80, $90 bearing. So what do I recommend? Well, once again, rockauto.com has the whole suspension components right here. Everything you need to do the job right and do it the first time. A lot easier, a lot more cost effective because you're not putting all the labor in to putting the bearing in. Now, what do you want to do? If you still have a problem, you can always do a dial indicator, but you want to do that before your bearing turns into this mess right here. So in order to use a dial indicator, well, we're going to need some help once again. Get your dial indicator, hook it up. That'll give you a foolproof tale if the car is good or not good. Here you go, Dave. Well, thanks, Johnny. I appreciate it, but I've already got a dial indicator hooked up here, and we'll show you how it works. Now, we've got this set up on the table, which isn't the best idea in the world because it's a little bit wobbly. You want to be on a more solid surface or down on the ground. You can put your car up on some jack stands, then hook the dial indicator up there. You'll get a more precise measurement. But just for sake of television, we're going to do it this way. Now, we've pulled the wheel off, obviously. We've pulled the brake rotor off as well. And we've got the caliper suspended here by a bungee cord to make sure we do not hurt any of the brake lines. Now, let's take a look at our dial indicator here. We don't have to zero it out because we're just looking for relative position here as we spin the wheel hub around and we've got it on the outside of the hub here and as we spin it around we're looking at the deflection and it is hardly moving at all 
And in fact, if you're under 3 thousandths, you're doing okay. Anything more than that, think about it. If you've got 3 thousandths down here, it's going to translate to the brake rotor. It's also going to translate out to the tire. So 3 thousandths here is going to be a whole lot when you get out to the edge of the tire, and that's going to make a big wobble as you drive down the road. There's a few things you can do to prevent this kind of deflection. One, you want to keep the surface of your hub clean. So make sure this is free of debris, uh, because remember, that can create the deflection right there by itself. And you want to make sure that you torque your lug nuts down correctly using a torque wrench like this. Too much pressure or too little, you can end up warping the hub and you're going to be in a world of hurt. But if you need a replacement, go check out rockauto.com for an entire hub assembly. Hey, by the way, if you don't use a torque wrench and you tighten the bolt too much and it breaks off, what do you do about it? Well, we're going to show you coming up next on Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by AP Laser, leading the way. Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Hey, hey, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we got one for you on the master technician tech tip today that everybody can relate to. You're cranking down on that bolt, you feel like it's the right torque, and all of a sudden, oh, it breaks. You get that gut-wrenching feeling in your stomach. What are you gonna do? No worries, rockauto.com has us covered. They have a whole array of extractors. Check it out, I'll show them to you. They're right here on the table. You can get this set right here. This is pretty neat because you actually have left-handed drill bits and the extractor itself. Now, the left-handed drill bits are nice because maybe the bolt's not really stuck in there, it's just broke off. You may start drilling and the bolt will run right out. You may not even have have to extract it if you're lucky but if it's stuck in there they still got you covered they have these impact driver we're going to use right here that's actually going to get in there and use a little bit of impact force and get the bolt out or you can use this little one here that helps with the external bolts now that's great but i want to show them to you in action here's a couple of bolt scenarios i broke off in the head yeah i know it's not rusted it's not cooked they're not stuck it's for demonstration purposes so here's the deal we got one here nice we're going to get the extractor here i know everybody put some vice grips on there but this makes it a lot easier because you got a little ratcheting mechanism in here or how it's built where it actually is going to grab the bolt. You can see it. Go ahead and just start turning it. And man, it's going to grab the bolt and I'll pop it off of here and unscrew it right out of there. It's got a hold of that bolt and you can go ahead and get them out. Okay, so that's the first one. Voila, broken bolt out. Next one here, a little more in detail. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure I punch it in the center, dead center of the hole. So if you don't hit the dead center of the hole, you're in trouble to start with. So make sure you're in the dead center. Once you're in the dead center, come back, get your little penetrating oil, get it on your little hole there, make sure that you're drilling, get your drill bit, and then you want to go in there and you actually want to drill in the center of that bowl and start running it down, okay? Once you run it down and you start getting a good hole, it looks like this, well, then it's extraction time. You can use the impact extractor, which is really nice. I'm just gonna come down here, put it in the hole. It's grabbing, I'm kind of twisting and hitting at the same time. Once I do that, there it goes, okay? And what's gonna happen with that is, it's actually gonna grab the bolt, and when it grabs the bolt, you can just take it out of there, and you'll see the hole right there in the center of the bolt, and it's actually holding on to it. So that makes things pretty easy. When you get a broken bolt, no matter what automotive scenario you run into, rockauto.com's got the answer. When you go to rockauto.com, Tom, it's not just about parts. You also have fluids and, and maintenance items for your vehicle, and one of those things is coolant. How has coolant changed through the years? You know, coolant and motor oil have become really engine specific. I think GM was one of the first manufacturers that said, hey, you need their special Dex Cool Oil for their their engine and the other manufacturers followed. So you'll, you'll see in the rockauto.com catalog, coolant's listed for specific vehicles. Um, sometimes the actual fluid is, is color coded. Ford will be yellow, GM might be purple. But you don't have to worry about that. If it's listed for your vehicle, then it's the right coolant for your car. And when you look, you're looking at the, uh, the bottles, sometimes it'll say like no silicates in this and you'll think, oh, silicates must be bad. Well, the Europeans like silicates, the European engine manufacturers. So, and the, the Asian manufacturers like phosphates. 
So if you see a tool that says no phosphates, that means it's probably for a European engine. And why do they like them then? It's just their, the, the materials they use in the engine. Um, Europe, I think, it tends to have harder water, so they, they don't want the phosphates because that, that is more likely to create scale. Fascinating. So, yeah, it's not like uh, it's gluten-free or something. Yeah, it's, it's, avoid, it's, avoid it at all costs, right? Right. This coolant may be good, is right for this engine, this coolant's right for the other engine depending on the vehicle manufacturer, the engine manufacturer. And where can we find coolant on the Rock Auto website? Well, it's listed for specific vehicles, so you can find it there. And you can also see all the coolants we sell under tools and universal parts, uh, under cooling system, coolant, antifreeze. You can look it up by vehicle. You can look it up by brand. Myriad ways to check it out on rockauto.com. Well, it's a moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and hook up a pressure tester so we can pressurize this system and see if we have any leaks. Oh, Dave, you brought us some tropical drinks. I must have known you were going to do your coolant spiel because I brought a tropical umbrella. Convenient. Just a reminder, please do not drink any of these. This is all the, the coolants that are available out there. It's, it's not just like the old days, John, back when you were a kid, that uh, it was just one type of coolant, and, and that was it. There's a specific coolant for lots of different vehicles out there. Make sure you check your manual to see which one you need. Absolutely, and we used ours in here. We got the right coolant now. It's time of the truth here, Dave. You watch down there, I'll pressurize the system. You know, you want to pressurize it to about 16 PSI, that's what the cap says. I'll just put a little bit in there and we'll see what's going on. All right, Dave, first of all, I'm holding on my end. How yeah. you doing? Uh, good news is there is nothing leaking from there. We, we found it. That Man, it. they thought they were going to get us with an intermittent. <laughs> Not this time, my friend. Now when this guy's around, we're going to figure it out. You got that right. Hey, you know what? We're out of time for this week. But join us next week for more Tech Garage brought to you by rockauto.com. See ya. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Shivala College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Shivala was ranked recently as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.